And as many of you guys know, um, our team was privileged to go to Cali to help out with TV Joshua Crusade. And I just want to call up um, one by one here to share with us. Please tell us your name. My name is Michael. And would you share with us um, the experience of the crusade that you had at the Columbia? My experience was really great. I was expecting going there, expecting to something big to happen, but I was shocked on how many people got out of wheelchairs. Like I was helping out with the cameras, so I was in front of all the action, and we were in the section with the people with the wheelchairs, and everywhere you went, there'd someone would be throwing their crutches on the floor, someone would be getting up, and other people would be running, and we're going after, running after with the camera, telling them to slow down, we wanna get the shot, but they'll be running even faster. So that was really surprising how many people got saved and set free from their ability not to walk. Amen. Brian. And Brian, tell us, what was your experience at the crusade of Cali, Columbia? Well, uh, from the beginning, I mean, I kind of experienced, uh, I would say, kind of a, a setback with getting there. You know, my passport was not on time, and I thought for sure I wasn't going to make it, you know. So at that point, I knew there was something in store for me, you know, um, definitely a blessing to be there, and uh, I felt definitely a privilege to be able to join the team. Um, if you would have told me eight months ago that I was going to go to Colombia when I first started going here, I would have, you know, just laughed or something. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest uh, impact that I, or the biggest uh, blessing that I received was um, I was one that was helping people in and making sure that they had the right uh, bracelet on to, to receive prayer in the prayer line. And just to see the desperation in their eyes, you know, wanting to come in, um, you know, that, that definitely touched me. Um, I know the first day that we were there, uh, there was almost a mini, a mini riot, you know, people were trying to come in and, and trying to receive their blessing. Um, I definitely felt, you know, felt for them, you know, and, and all I could do was just tell them, you know, stay in, stay in prayer, stay in faith, you know, God can locate you wherever you're at, you know, and, and during the mass prayer, you know, we would be running out. People would be pointing. There's people here, you know, people being delivered. There's people being set free, you know, come, come get them. So we would come get them and, and run and pull them to the front of the stage, you know. And that definitely reminded me that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, you know. I was def definitely touched by that, you know. That reminded me that, you know, you... God can locate you wherever you're at, you know, it doesn't necessarily, you don't need to be in prayer line, you know, at that moment, when God knows your situation, God knows what you need, and he, he can touch your every need. My name is Oksana. Um, there's a lot of things I like to share, but obviously we don't have all the time, um, so I'm just going to share a couple things. The first thing I really enjoyed was the worship. Now, the second night especially, the presence of God was so tangible that, like, I know I was supposed to be working there, and I was supposed to kind of watch out to make sure everything was going in order, but I couldn't hold myself. I had to worship because if you think about it, it's like a stadium, and when Prophet TB Joshua was already up there getting ready to share his word, every, people in the stadium, every, were just, they were continuing to, to, uh, to sing, and the song was um, the one we sing, that there's power in the name of Jesus, and it's, it was weird because when somebody confesses with their mouth that there is power break every chain break every chain when they're saying that you if you were there you would see that people the camera would be pointing at people people would be shaking like the the, the demons inside they couldn't hold it they couldn't that they were they couldn't stay in that body because they were confessing with their mouth that break every chain break every addiction and it was just so powerful because people were just singing it was just a few sentences few lines people were singing and they were being delivered at that time it wasn't something that people had to pray for 30 minutes for God to come no it was in worship that people were already getting delivered and it was amazing um, the other you know there were so many um, healings, especially like we were saying, but um, what I really want to share is actually a deliverance. And this was um, about a 10 year old boy, and the mom came with him, and the, and the mom said, You know, Prophet, you know, she's like, Man of God, you know, my son, ever since he was four months old, um, that something's going on with him. I can't control him. There's something in him. He's always causing me trouble. There's always, um, he's always getting in trouble. He doesn't listen, he doesn't do anything. And Prophet TB Joshua says, um, and this, this spirit would not say, there was a spirit of of a tiger. Now you have to understand this 10-year-old boy started getting on his knees and started crawling like a tiger. 
a 10 year old boy already at such a young age that the devil and the demons already entered this this little boy and at that moment that he was delivered and free from the spirit um, that was with him since he was four months old I mean there was just so many deliverances so many healings and you know prophet T.B. Joshua says that God chooses kind of what we go through but it's what it's how we uh, choose to go through it and these people that came literally thousands and thousands of people that w uh, went through those doors um, they knew where to go they knew how to get rid of their problem and that pro and that solution was to come to the crusade and get healed and delivered and so um, it was amazing I'm telling you guys uh, my name is Vicki. Um, well, I was in charge of taking people that were just healed or delivered, like, down to interview. So every single person that I took and that I was in charge of, like, had the biggest smile and just joy in their face. There was this one specific uh, testimony where this soccer player, he was, like, famous in Colombia. Um, his arm was broken. He had a hard cast on. He couldn't move his fingers at all because, like, you couldn't, all you saw in the cast was his fingers. And after the prophet prayed for him, you saw him moving his fingers, and he was, like, filled with joy so much. And then the the next day at the pastor's conference, he was there, and the cast was completely gone. His hand was moving, and it was just awesome to see the glory of God working and just healing power. My name is Katrina. There's so much to share, just like all of the rest people said, but one of the particular ones that stood out to me was the first healing that took place. It was this guy, um, he had a leg ulcer, and you could see it, the wound was open. It was like red, and it, it was... It was disgusting, honestly, but <laughs> the power, like, you can't even explain it because the power of God was so tangible in that place where as soon as the prophet prayed for him, he started walking. And you can imagine the pain that he felt, like, especially because it was, like, op open wound. And, I mean, I get a paper cut at work, and I'm like, ow, like, I can't staple stuff because I have a paper cut and here he is walking with this open wound because the demon behind that um, sickness was gone and he could walk again and it was just so much like that, that set the atmosphere right and he sets another uh, lady free from like not being able to breathe and she's walking around with the um, breathing tank like she, and it's helping her whatever it's called I don't know but <laughs> Like, all these things that I don't even, didn't know existed, these sicknesses. And then you, to you see that, like, people are free from it. Amen. It was just So awesome. while I was in Colombia, my job, I was uh, helping out the camera guys. And um, so I was right in the front lines and saw all the action happening all at once, all around me. So it's really hard to point, point just one thing. But what I saw the most was people's desperation. Like, their need for the man of God to move and for God to move in their lives. Like, there was... I don't know, like 45,000 people inside the stadium, another 10 outside waiting just, just to see God's power move. And people were just pushing towards, towards God, and they were moving towards the man of God, just trying to get a little bit of what he had. And, like, they were just going, I don't know, they were... <laughs> but, yeah, it was, really, it was really crazy to see just how many people really needed God's touch in their lives. And just miracles happening left and right, deliverances, people getting out of wheelchairs, people throwing down crutches, even like people that couldn't breathe, people with cancer and all that stuff. It just everything was gone right in place. Uh, so when I was uh, when I was uh, in Colombia, I kind of had the same kind of same experience as Alex, uh, just experiencing or noticing how much people had such a hunger for God. Um, in the beginning, I was I was. Uh, registering people as they're coming in and literally I mean you just see thousands of thousands of people standing outside the stadium waiting to get in hungry to get in people who are literally like pushing you down like shoving me I had this one lady literally like like pushing me down this it's always the short little ladies <laughs> they're crazy <laughs> but literally she's like pushing me down and I'm like holding on to the thing trying to have a translator and the police had to come and like push her away from me but that's uh, besides the point <laughs> But uh, <laughs> what, what touched me, though, is that you see so many people, so many people coming in with, you know, in wheelchairs, literally people on sick beds. You know, I've seen people come, come to meetings before where you see them in uh, wheelchairs, but literally, like, people carried on couches because they don't, have, they don't have the means to go to the hospital. They don't have the means to go somewhere and, and, and to receive uh, medicine or anything like that. These people are hungry. These people are desperate. 
And just to know that God came and he did his work, he touched their lives, he healed them, set them free, I mean, that made the whole trip for me. The testimonies are countless, and I, I could go off and say a million things, but one thing is, is just the power of God meeting people at their needs, and that was the most impactful thing for me. Amen, amen, praise God. Uh, like Bryson, I was, uh, I was letting people through, and so I saw, you know, like people, not people wanting to get in, but like when they were shutting the gates, because it was already full, and like I saw how people just, I mean, I never seen this in America, because it's, I mean, you don't see, you don't see that, that, that want, and uh, another thing that really, that really uh, stood out to me was uh, I was holding the light for one of the camera guys, and this guy, he had a cut from side to side, like his ears, he had cancer, and so like you do this in front of his eyes, and like his eyes were just straight, and like Prophet told him to get up, and like like he snapped out of it, and like started moving around, and he just got up and walked, and I was just like, <laughs> and like that was the first time they slapped me for not paying attention. With us, um, I think the thing that touched me most was seeing like there were so many people like different ages different like situations that came we saw like a little girl she was about 10 years old being healed of this problem where she had to wear a brace coming from her waist down to her legs and that was the only way she walked and a, another little boy about 10 years old healed or delivered from a spirit of a tiger that entered him at four months old and we saw those little children like we got them delivered we saw them healed like instantly and at the same time as seeing just little people little kids being healed and delivered we saw elderly people who carried oxygen tank tanks walking in wheelchairs because they couldn't live or for themselves they had they needed help in every part of their life to just keep living day to day and we saw those people healed and delivered they started walking breathing on their own and it's just amazing how God does not, he does not, is not limited to an age or to a certain disability that you have. He sees every situation, every age, and just like people of all ages and situations of just being healed and delivered left and right everywhere. They had. Um, I want to share something real quick. Like there's a difference. It wasn't a missionary trip they went on. It was a crusade that they went to help. But there's a difference. When you go to a missionary trip, it's good and all. You get to help people, but you come back kind of hopeless and helpless because and even probably more depressed because there's nothing you can do about it and there's so many people that are hurting and when you come back to work and what do you have to say like ah oh, this is so sad but when you go to a crusade and you see everything that they have seen like when I was asking them just pick out one thing they couldn't pick out one thing because there was so much and then they come back to work and they share with their co-workers with their friends and their friends are impacted um, like I was telling talking with Katrina, she was sharing her whole story with me. And she was saying like, I came back and I was sharing with my coworkers and she's like, I just know that maybe some of them can make fun of me, but when they're gonna have a problem, they're gonna come to me because they know what I experience. They know the God that I serve, amen. So it's so important. So testimonies are so powerful. They impact our life and the lives around us, amen.